I'm back working on the CRF-80 today. I've patiently waited for a couple weeks for parts to come in from the mail after ordering them, and most of them have come. So I'm about at a point where I can start putting things back together. Uh, let's do a quick update here. When I took it apart, the piston was, okay, I need a better angle here. That piston was totally seized up in the cylinder, and you can see the, it rusted and just ate out this steel in these rings. You can't really tell, but it, it is probably half a millimeter of material missing in those rings. I, I really, I could have had it bored out. I could have re-sleeved it, taken it to a shop. And those are all, those are all valid arguments. Around here, I found that it's, it's really expensive to do that stuff. And it probably would have been a gamble as to whether or not that would have actually saved me money compared to just getting a new cylinder. So I just got a new cylinder. This thing is gorgeous. I love the OEM Honda Sheen going on here. Oh, beautiful. Gone to the cylinder head here. I took the valves out and the exhaust valve was in awesome condition. The intake valve though was not so good. So you see that little shiny little lip right there above the face of the valve? That's bad news. And that just comes from over time pounding into the cylinder head and I don't know why this one wore out so much quicker than the exhaust valve. I know they normally wear out quicker than the exhaust valve, but the exhaust valve looked like totally fine. This one was toast, so. I got a brand new Honda intake valve. Which one is it? This one. Lapped it in, I'm happy. I also replaced the, uh, the valve seals. Is the valve stem seals? Uh, sure, anyway, the oil seals that go beneath the springs. So that's all freshened up. Piston, the old one, this thing is toast. I mean, you look close up, the rings are all stuck and sunken into the grooves. So I got a brand new one. This thing's a beauty. It is a Forsetti brand. I ordered it from Australia. It's like a Chinese brand, so I know, ooh, Chinese. But this one though, I think it'll do the trick. I mean, can you picture that blowing apart in the engine? I hope not. All right, let's talk about the clutch side of things. I took off the cover here, spent like, oh man, it was probably, one, it was probably close to two hours scraping off the gasket surface around here. I took apart the oil pump and looked inside, everything's functional spins freely, there's no gunk in there. I think it'll be pumping just fine. I took out the oil filter screen just above the oil plug. Looks really clean. There's like a little piece of, I think it was like a blue or yellow bit of, I don't know, I don't know what that was, but looked really clean, no shavings or anything. I took apart the actual clutch pack. All of the plates were really stuck together. I had to do a little finessing to get them apart. The friction plates, all looked like they had some decent life left in them, so I left them in there. Put a brand new fresh gasket on there. Oh man, there are a few things more satisfying than a brand new gasket, I gotta say. Let's talk about the flywheel side. The flywheel itself, I'm gonna show a picture of how nasty it was. Evaporust, I should say that slower, Evaporust is the product. Um, worked miracles once again. Look how shiny and brand new this thing looks. Super pleased. So the cover sat on here like this, right? Here's the front sprocket for the chain. The chain came loose, fell off, I don't know, but it punched a hole uh, right here. And so the entire cavity in here was exposed to dirt and whatever, and it was nasty. The flywheel was packed with dirt, the cover was packed with dirt, the stator here was packed with dirt, it was horrible. I don't know if the stator is gonna be good, any good anymore. I, of course, have to try it. If it works, it works, right? The only thing I don't have engine-wise is the flywheel cover, but the whole top end I'm gonna put on today. The connecting rod here has very minimal side-to-side -side play and zero up and down play, which of course is awesome. This thing is ready for a brand new piston and to be put back together.
that's just beautiful. A brand new piston and a brand new cylinder. Compare that to what this looked like before. I'm sure this is a happy little bike already. So before I put this head on, I'm checking the seal of the valves. To do that, I just put some gas in the port here. And I'm looking for leaks out of the exhaust valve area here. It's been sitting in there for about a minute and there hasn't even been a little drop, which is awesome. I'm gonna dump this out and do the same with the intake valve, which is the new one. Okay, intake port is filled to the brim here. Watching the valve. Nothing. There's a little bit glistening, seeping going on. I don't know if that came from the exhaust valve or came down from the top here from the intake. Either way, I am definitely pleased. That is more than enough to run the engine very well. Got the head on, ready to get the uh, camshaft and the valve rockers going on here. So I'm ready to put the camshaft sprocket on here. It's really important that I get it um, oriented correctly because there are lobes on this camshaft that when they are pointed up, they're opening the valves. So in order to make sure the valves are opening at the right time, on the flywheel down here, there are marks. It's really hard to see, but there's a little T right here, and that means top dead center. I'm gonna line it up with the little arrow right here, and then when it's in that spot, I'm going to put the sprocket on with the chain and have the little dot here at the top, that little circular dot pointed directly up. And that means that the camshaft will be timed correctly with the crankshaft. So as they turn, they turn in a rhythm so that as the piston is down, the valves are opening in the right order, if that makes any sense at all. So as I turn the engine here, you can see the sprocket going. I'm gonna find top dead center. Now there's an F here, and that F means fire. That's when the spark plug fires in that position right before top dead center. And then when I line it up to top dead center, there's our little dot right at the top here. So now that we've got the camshaft, this cam sprocket, and the engine timed, it's time to put on the rocker arms here. So these sit on, they just slide on the top of the head like this. As you can see, the cam has these lobes and when the engine turns, the lobes come and they push up against these rollers here. Let me try to hold this right, yeah. So it pushes up right here. Boop, boop. And as it pushes up, it rocks, and the outside of the arm here pushes down on the valve, and that opens it. And so these are just opening, closing, opening, closing, all based on the timing of the engine from the camshaft here. Cool stuff.
valves are adjusted. Here's kind of what it looks like when the engine's turning. When you get to where it, the lobe starts to push on the rocker arm and I'm fighting the valve spring, it's hard not to shake around. But anyway, that's what a basic four-stroke valve train looks like. motor is ready to go. Got all the new parts in there. It turns over well, has good compression. I'm still not sure if it's going to spark yet because the stator's in really bad shape, but I'm feeling pretty optimistic about it. In the next video, we're going to put the engine back in the bike. Whoop! And we'll see if she goes.